Welcome to Austin Community College, Class 12 of the Advanced Woodworking class. Tonight we're going to cut our subassembled sides to length. That'll put the legs now flush with the top rail. And the top frame, if you remember we built it an eighth of an inch larger, will be cut to the shoulder to shoulder length of the bottom frame. Now if we have time, we'll also round over our bottom slats to prepare for the final glue up. Well, let's get started. We'll take these sides uh, over to the cutoff sled on the table saw. This particular frame presents a unique challenge because this profile of the leg is curved. We don't have anything to put up against the fence that will register a square cut for us. So we're going to cut two sticks so that we can, with double stick tape, put this stop down, and that way the whole frame now will be perpendicular to the fence. And then we can set our stop to deliver a cut that will be just flush to this. Got that, in, that stop in place. We can remove these gauges. And now we have a stop that sets us perpendicular to the cut. We'll set our, our stop here. To yield the length that we want. Now we want to protect this back side of these cuts because that as the blade exits those cuts, that's where it blows out grain. And of course the blade needs to be sharp. Put a piece of mask there, press it down into the corner. and get this back side. Now with mask, you really want to press this stuff down tight because it's holding on to the fibers next to that cut. Most important in the back. Now clearly we could do this work at the bench and probably be a little more comfortable. But for the sake of convenience, we're here at the saw. Make sure we're up against this auxiliary fence. Come up against the stop. Let's go ahead and mask off the other one. Very nice, all right. Pretty clean looking cut, not huh? blow out. Excellent, okay. Now we're ready to cut our top frames to the shoulder to shoulder length of that bottom frame. Let's mask off the side that'll go to the fence to minimize the blowout we get out the back. We can press that, especially at the ends where it matters really well. 
it's always the exit side that blows out. Now we're done with this double stick tape. This stuff is remarkably resilient, as you'll see here. Yeah, it's not budging. I'll get a wedge and drive it in there. If you ever need to hold anything down, <laughs> try a little double stick tape. We're going to do our trim cut. Let's lower the blade. A lot of blade showing. And we're just going to skim this side. Make a little bitty cut. So this is what we're matching. So we get that test piece and set it to the nominal 18 and a half. I'll be honest, I set it just a shade over 18 and a half. And so apparently that's exactly where we are. So I'll look at that amount, make that adjustment here. So when I flush them, that just feels perfect. So we're going to make that final cut. This is our trim side. Goes to the fence and to the stop. Bring it right to the stop. Okay, here we go. Let's check and see how we like that. I hope we're going to be happy. Okay, fantastic. We're ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be to flatten all of these surfaces where the drawers run. That drawer slides right across this surface. We want that to be absolutely flat across. I've got a straight edge here. I can tip it and just see where the daylight is coming underneath in both spots where the drawer will run. I can see daylight all the way across here and here and it touching out on this end. So I'm going to take down a little material out of here with a hand plane. You can see why we didn't really bother to sand these parts before. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't want to go too far, we want to take a look and see how we're doing. The key to this is, is checking often. I've improved the situation, and here I'm really good. More to go here, more to go here. A little bit out there. An interesting thing is this outside seems to be a little bit higher. So I'm going to concentrate on that. Now we're really, really close. I still have a little bit more material I'd like to remove here. At this point, we're really good. It's time to move on to sandpaper. This is one of those times when I would really prefer a sanding block that has rounded edges because I really don't want to catch on these edges as I'm coming across here. So rather than pick this really sharp edged one, I've got this guy. I'm going to run down through the grits. That was 120. This is 180. And you can see, I'm not really paying all that much attention to cross-grain sanding. As, as I run down through the grits, I'll be more and more careful about that. I'm going to teach one now. And so I came across that fully. And now when I come this way, I want to make sure I get rid of my cross grain scratches on that piece. Now remember, we really haven't sanded any of that. So let's take care of that now. Pick that 180 back up and carry it on back. Three twenty. While I'm in here, I also like to take care of these sharp edges. It's important for if people reach inside the case. No, no surprises there. We've also got this round over intersecting this round over. We can blend those in a little better. I would like the sharper corner for that. I'll get the sanding block with the sharp edges.
Here we're just going to carefully blend those roundovers together right where they come to the corner. Our next step is going to be to wax the area just where the drawer runs. So let's mask off the glue joints. We've got a 7 8 inch frame coming in there. Looks like this is a 1 inch piece of tape. So we're going to hang that over about an eighth. We know that when that bottom frame plugs in, it's going to sit a quarter inch, a quarter inch from that tenon to that surface. So we're going to mask that area because it's a glue joint. So just above that mortise. And then from about an eighth inch forward, that's all going to be finish rather than wax. So we're going to mask off where the finish will be. All right, we've got frame number one ready for wax. There's a very nice consistency between these two, which is really a, a good sign. It's an indication that a lot of care was was um, used in in doing that mortising and tenon. I read grain direction, and this was a more favorable way to go. Well, no need to watch this in in real time. We're going to speed this up. Uh, knowing that uh, the whole process is going to be flattening. You see me pull out a scraper here, assist in speeding up the operation. And uh, when we get everything flat and sand it out true, uh, the next step is going to be to finish masking off this side. And then we'll flatten the lower frame and the upper frame and mask those off and get them ready for wax. I'm going to dust this off and check these rails for flat. A little bit of a bow up in that one, so I'm going to plane that flat, check it again, flatten it down just a little more with the scraper, and then go back to sanding. This is the last sanding for this part, and so I'm going to ease the edges, take care of any of the problems that need to be 
uh, taken care of. You can see I've got a little bit of a problem on that front rail. Scrape it down, sand it back out. And make sure that everything feels real good. Bottom, ease all of those roundovers because we're preparing for the final glue up here after we get this part waxed. The last step in the process is going to be to wax these surfaces. We'll rub this. This is just ordinary paraffin wax, also known as sealing wax. 
gold flax. I'm just going to rub it into the surface. This is going to take a couple of different applications. And then we're going to grind off every bit of it with scotch brine. It's best to stay away from that tape. If you get the tape hot, it tends to just melt that glue from the tape into the wood. And it's a real pain to get out of there. The idea here is to end up with paraffin in the wood, not on the wood. So we're melting it directly into the wood. Now we're going to take any excess off the scotch bright. This takes a little elbow grease. And again, the key is really to, to end up with paraffin in the wood, not on it. Yeah, it feels really slick. Now that's all there is to it, and we can peel this mask now. And uh, this little intersection right there, when we finish, will just go away. I'm going to take a little, I'm going to take a little 600 grit and just don't come across that. Boy, that just that'll make a drawer that'll just run really nice and slick. It's the bottom frame. You'll notice that the scotch bright really kind of helps to even it all out. this with 600 grit. Now think about it, that is where the bottom of the drawer is going to slide. Or 
year after year after year, and it's just slick. And then the sides, where the side of the drawer runs, it's really just this half inch right across the top here. And the bottom. Try not to get too careless with this uh, wax because if you, it ends up on the floor, you'll end up uh, working in a skating rink. So now you know if somebody asks you, how do you get those drawers to run so nice and it's just wood on wood glides? You can say, oh, it's easy. There's nothing to it. All it takes is a lot of elbow grease. It is tough not to hit that that masking tape. It is one of the reasons I peel it off quickly once I'm done in these tight spots like this. I am trying to stay off of it. I should mention here that if you're going to be spraying lacquer rather than using an oil-based type finish, it's best to mask off the waxed area, do all your lacquering, come back and wax after you've lacquered. Because lacquer and wax just don't get along at all. Okay, and that is how you get slick running drawers.